Hello guys, and welcome back to Strategic Command World War II World at War with our Allied playthrough. Now, my logic is always to deal with the bad news first, so let's look at France. <laughs> Which, as you can see, is in a position. We have officially surpassed the historical fall of France, which I know I've echoed this plenty of times, but I'm quite happy with that considering how poorly I feel that I played France. It's time to get our last jabs in before France falls, just to fuck with those Germans a little bit more. Now I have a lot of talk about, about some of my strategies that worked for me in the beginning, and they've been starting to fail me, and I've been realizing how bad they are overall, and what I'm going to do to change them. And I, this is the reason I'm staring at the UK as I say this. Now, we have 113 points as France. There's, like, virtually nothing we actually need to use it on. Because we're just getting fucking surrounded, and this fucking HQ is going to die. There's no armies here, all the armies are on the Maginot, because I'm a fucking idiot, and I accidentally replicated history. So let's take these heavy tanks that showed up and let them see at least some action and attack the 8th army which has marched into our territory. We dealt 3 damage, we took 2. Okay, that's not so bad, I'm quite happy with that. The enemy tanks can take like 2 shots and then they're just fine. So, that's cheating. But, <laughs> it's not cheating, but you know what I mean. This probably isn't the smartest thing I'm gonna do, it's probably not the dumbest, it's just, it's just spite pretty much. We're going to swap the HQ into the Maginot. <laughs> so we could take this army and try to do at least a little bit of damage with it. It's got to be terrible. Look how terrible this damage is. We dealt one, we lost three. Fucking awful. But, uh, better than nothing, I guess. Absolutely no entrenchment swapping in there. Quite interesting. But the HQ is nice and defended. Well, that, that's worth. The Polish Corps is going to attack the enemy German HQ that has shown itself. Three damage dealt, two received. You know what? It's not as bad as I thought it was going to go. Let's swap out with the French 2nd Corps and attack again. Alright. A little bit more damage delivered. A little bit more damage taken at the end of the day, you know. Not really a big deal. We can reinforce the HQ, which is going to cost most of our MPPs to try to make it last a little bit longer. Emphasis on a little bit. We've held on so long that the Italians have broken through for fuck's sake. So there's only really one way this can go. There's only really one way this can go. And it's not a good way. Uh, yeah, fuck it, why not? Any, any way we can delay them, sure. I'm gonna reinforce this core right here as well, even though there's a little no point. I doubt they'll spend the time killing these, they'll probably just go around and one-shot the HQ at Paris. I don't know if they'll just stop from there. They might actually keep attacking, which if they do, you know, the more prepared we are, the better. We are out of MPPs already, but that's fine. Kind of just have to see how things go. Uh, we do have some action with the French Navy that we can turn our attention to, which I shall. Let's bring the Dunkirk battleship over here and attack the Lampo destroyer, which had it re oh, it retreated into port. Ooh. Not detecting anything immediately over here, nor immediately over here. That's unfortunate. I don't think we can do much damage while this thing is in port. Let's take a quick look. Yeah, no. No, attacking something in port is never a smart idea. It's been really hard to keep track of the enemies. They've kind of been hiding. Every time we beat them up, they run away. So that's unfortunate. Meaning a lot of these French naval units are probably going to go to waste. Which is also very unfortunate. Because I can't hunt them down. I can't get through here. I can't get into the ports. There might be something in here, but it's very little that we can do in that regard. So that's basically France. Now, we do know that there was a submarine heading down here somewhere. There it is, found it. It almost reached America. Holy shit. All right. I guess, uh, do the Brits have to stay out of here? They might. The Canadians don't, I think. Uh, but that's, that's different. So let's take, we only have one British destroyer in range. Uh, there's no difference between it and the Canadians right now. We don't have any ASW enhancements, although we are researching it. And boy, we could not get that soon enough. We're going to go ahead and take the British Bulldog Destroyer. And we're going to go bring it down here. And we're going to attack 
Submarine dives from attack. Okay. Where did it dive? Not this way. Let's go looking for it. Oh, found it. Hello. Found you. Attack again. Submarine dives from attack again. Oh, but we dealt some damage that time. We dealt some damage. And we still know where it is. We still see it. We've gotten it away from the point where we don't want it. Let's send the Jersey Destroyer down this way to... Actually, well, both of these destroyers. One on each line. To go try to catch that and maybe kill it. We're not taking any damage. We're just dealing damage. So that's only good. So now, about failed strategy. So... This was evident enough when I hugged too close to Germany and lost one of my three British battleships that staying so close to land was a bad idea. And it's really being emphasized as I'm watching this light cruiser get shot into oblivion. It's like half dead now. Partially the fault of a submarine, but primarily the fault of this. I am realizing how difficult and just not smart it is to keep all of these ships here. Like, in the channel. It was very handy, to be honest, the channel, uh, while we were initially dealing with the invasion of France. But the invasion of France is about to be over. So there's very little else we can gain by keeping a bunch of ships over here. So we're going to have to change this strategy. If I could do this again, I would probably just not have gone into the dagger bank. I would have stayed in the channel, probably. I don't know. It really depends on the situation. But I, I would, in this situation, against the AI not have done this. And I am learning my lesson. I am definitely learning my lesson. I see the mistakes I've made. Let's reinforce the Javelin Destroyer here. Gotta go ahead and get that up to snuff. This battleship... Okay, wait. We gotta do reinforcements before anything. So... Uh, a little concerned about these strat bombers, but not entirely. We do need to reinforce the number 11 fighters that spawned here more recently. And we need to get the Coastal Command fighters... Well, closer to the coast, I guess, basically. Hugging the water, I don't know how smart or not smart that really is. But we'll go ahead and we'll move them just next to London for the time being. Uh, again, I really don't know how smart that is. We'll move the strap bombers all the way back in the rear here. The tack bombers, they could get some damage off, but with right now... What are these upgrades you can get? Oh, it's just naval weaponry, right, right. That's going to become actually relevant soon. That is going to become relevant soon. Is there a smarter place I could perhaps leave you? The only place else I could think of is just moving everything back a touch. Um, which I may end up doing. There's not a lot of room here. The fighters only really need to be up on the front, to be honest. If I want to engage enemy fighters. Thinking about it? If I don't care about engaging enemy fighters... Which, right now, I don't even have the range to. They can just stay in the rear. So, you know what? You just go back to where you were in the rear. Uh, that's fine. I, I think there's a there's an undo, but it, I think it only works for land units. So, that's whatever. We're, we're not doing anything offensive with this right now, anyway. We're just chilling out. I didn't actually move this HQ or this uh, core last turn. But I'm going to bring this HQ up to Birmingham. Where it could be potentially useful, I hope. We do need to have a presence over by Portsmouth, and right now, I also didn't bring this. Oh my god, I'm forgetting so much stuff. The Rupert Force Special Forces need to keep heading south in their trucks, just normally. The First Corps here is going to go to Portsmouth, and they're going to take up defense positions and start entrenching there, just in case any pesky Germans try to come across the channel. Um, to replenish these carriers, I feel I really do need to get them out of harm's way, is something to note. And to get them out of harm's way, I'll probably want to get other things out of their ports. Ideally. Now, this one is fine. So let's go ahead and replenish the aircraft on this. I'm going to say this one's fine as well. It's not in that bad of a situation. The one over here in London is the carrier I'd be more concerned about. Because it's still getting involved. It may not get involved while in port if I go ahead and just do this. We'll go ahead and reinforce it. It's in port. It should be safe. I hope. We'll find out. This one is good to go. It can get naval weaponry upgrades, so I will go ahead and give it to that. We're going to get this navy upgraded, and we're going to begin the battle for the Atlantic. This is my replacement strategy now. Since I've learned how dangerous staying so close is, 
I have my new strategy. It's going to be the battle for the Atlantic. We're going to fight any pesky German subs that show up. Maybe we can harass the Germans off the Bay of Biscay, maybe, if possible, or anywhere that they pop up. Because remember, earlier I said I was going to use the UK to dominate the Atlantic, and so that's really what I'm going to need to use them for. And to do that, I'm going to have to get them out of here. Out of here is just not... Well, here, generally, is just not a good position for them. I have to look at other things before I spend all my points. Um, thank God this core is not attriting. The HQ moving up was exactly what it needed. Let's go ahead and attack with the second core, the enemy garrison. Not doing a whole lot, but not dying. We can go ahead and actually move the first core back here. Get it back in a better supply range. Go ahead and attack with that anyway. Very little to gain from that, but this garrison is dying, sort of. Let's get the Sudan Defense Force Corps back up to strength. It's in a little bit better supply now that the HQ is here. This is actually a fairly good HQ as well. Can this be upgraded? Yeah, with mobility and AA defense, not that important as of right now. Now, over here in Egypt, the Italians aren't coming. So I'm guessing they expect me to come to them. That's probably what happened historically anyway. So I've moved the HQ up, so supply is a little bit better, but the goal is to move the HQ up even further. So we're going to take the core first, and we're going to move it up here into the desert. You can now see an enemy army over at Tobruk. Okay, it's not bad. We're going to move our army up. I just, I don't want to walk up to it and discover it like that. We're going to move the arty up behind it. We're going to move our HQ up into the village. There's a reason I'm pacing this is because we still have to catch the things in the rear up. Not exactly sure how I want to deal with this, to be honest. Because... I assume anti-tank is something you have to put in the, the dude's face, pretty much. We'll put the anti-tank up here. Put the recon up here. And then that leaves the bombers and such to the rear. I don't really know the range of this, but what we have right now is probably good enough. So we have everything in position. Everything's upgraded except for the infantry. They could use some mobility upgrades. Quote-unquote use. Doesn't mean I'm going to give it to them. And we're going to look at potentially moving on Tobruk soon. Now that everything is kind of in position, it would be next turn. Maybe we can lure something out by having advanced up to the border. I don't really know. There's probably little point in using the French or anything. Well, actually, theoretically, let's say we moved the province battleship here. Do you see anything? Nope. We could use this to shoot the port and hurt their supply in Tobruk for next turn. We took one damage, we dealt one damage, but I think that's fine, considering that we're probably going to lose this battleship anyway. This may hurt their supply and make them more open to my attack next turn. Perhaps. That's a thought. That's a goal. That's a way to use uh, a battleship. <laughs> now, we're still sitting on some points for the UK that we want to use, so... I'm going to get the renowned battle cruiser heading up to Rosith, which I had intended to do initially. That's heading up there. That's good. This Sheffield light cruiser does very much need to get into a port of some kind at some point. I'm trying to figure out what's the best one to put it. I don't have enough ports. Those Irish ones really, really could have come in handy. Although I, I don't want Ireland joining the Axis. I think that could have been just awful. Awful, awful, awful. But I'm trying to get the Navy upgraded. All of it. Now that we're kind of shifting gears and i also want to be able to repair the sheffield light cruiser just that a lot of things that are here i plan to upgrade like the kent heavy cruiser here with anti-air that's so important for these things in my opinion and naval weaponry because a lot of this is going to come down to things like this we're going to have to rely on the navy of the uk quite a bit for dominating the atlantic we can't get ASW or anything, but for now I'll just go around assigning whatever naval upgrades I can with my current points. I cannot upgrade you further. I should have, I didn't have the points. I should have maybe just focused one battleship last time. That might have been smarter. This is burning through my points, but hey, at least it'll be a little cheaper because I lost a battleship. Ha, 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 ha. Well, at the very least, the Irish Sea should be a safe place, so we're going to go ahead and sail over there. Irish Sea, again, should be a safe place. The Belfast light cruiser doesn't really need to be over here either. We don't need to really force it, so we're just going to sail it over normally. 
And the Southampton... Southampton can kind of go join it in St. George's Channel for the time being. As a bit of a screen, let's say. As a bit of a screen. Now, we're going to need a screen when we actually pull the fleet off nearby, so we don't want to have all of our destroyers over here, naturally. It, I only have one destroyer, no, sorry, two, still over here, both of which need upgrades. We're going to go place this over here out of harm's way for the time being for now. Now, looking at the Americans, there are more things that we definitely want to do, research and otherwise. Uh, we just finished getting naval weaponry, which is a pretty big deal. Looks like there can be a second upgrade to it. So I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to start researching that right now. That's very important for the Americans. Very important. We still have 106 MPPs. Not much to spend it on in terms of research that's worthwhile. Let's go ahead and take the second army and move it to the transition point to go to Beaver. And now let's go look at the east side of, um, or the west side of America and see. I'm sure there's some kind of upgrade we can do here now that we've gotten this. Set mode. Fighters, bombers, mix. Oh. Oh. I guess that's, I didn't realize that you had to swap that. Which is why I'm so impressed by this right now. Doesn't look like the carrier can get any further upgrades. No, but this battleship can get some naval weaponry on it. Everything everything here already has naval weaponry on it. That's what's happening. That's the situation here. The second corps here can move down to LA. The first Air Force fighters have arrived. They don't have any upgrades they can do just yet, sadly. I don't fully understand how to get fighters from here to here. I'm guessing you just operate them. I'm guessing that's how that works. We'll go ahead and we'll move these fighters somewhere where they could play a defensive role. Let's say just behind the ports here by San Jose. So it can protect any ships here in case any Japanese come lurking. I wish I could send them to Hawaii, but we don't really have that capability. Still 88 MPPs with the Americans. Not a whole lot to be done. Not even on our infantry because we're just that behind. I guess as a joke, five MPPs, we can reinforce the garrison at Panama. That's not really worth much of anything, but looks like that's all we have for the Americans for the time being. Looking at the Soviets, I'm going to go ahead and get them some spying and intelligence to help with their future research and other things like that. That pretty much takes care of them instantaneously. Now for India. The Indians are actually capped out on research they can do for right now. And they can only really afford anti-air and garrisons. With the Chinese being so successful, I don't think we really need to worry about any of that. So we don't really need that. So we're just going to save up their points for the time being and wait until next turn to see what we do with their stuff. Now to look at China, where we did lose an army last turn right here. We lost a whole army to these three enemy armies, which hopefully will not have been for nothing because I made this big northern offensive to try to disrupt their lines around Changsha and it worked. First and foremost, oh boy. So we have advanced fighters, but we don't have an opportunity to actually put them into practice yet. We don't have any time to use them. So we're just going to reinforce the first fighters because that's, I believe, the best that we can do for right now. We could upgrade it, but the, the damage potential is bad. It looks like they have actually retreated their air now that I've been making gains, which is honestly, it's amazing. That's exactly what I wanted to see. Let's start where we know we can make a little bit of progress, maybe. And that's down here in the south where we have a bunch of cores facing down against a core that has been slowly retreating from us ever since Amoy. And let's try pushing in that general direction first. So let's attack with the fifth core. Nothing happened. Cool. Let's swap out with the core at Amoy. And attack again. And nothing happened. <laughs> yeah, it's gonna it's gonna be like that for a little bit. We can also attack with the fourth core. And lo and behold, what do you know? Nothing happened. <laughs> uh, it's not even like entrenched at this point. Let's swap the third core in and attack again. Oh, we finally dealt some damage. Holy crap, dude. That took forever. We gotta get this core moving somewhere. There's not a lot of room on this front. 
So we'll move it up just behind where the army died just last turn. Now over here by Wuhan, they've actually weakened their defense over here in order to try to strike us with our pushes that we have going on elsewhere. So first and foremost, this L core is going to reinforce back up to max as that is what I need it to do. We do want this 17th army to suffer a lot of pain this turn. Maybe even die. I don't know if we can quite pull that much off, but let's go ahead and take the 42nd army from behind their entrenchments and go and attack the 17th army, which is in a terrible position. We lost one to damage, but we dealt two. I call that actually pretty successful. Now from here, we will take this core behind their fortifications and go ahead and attack the 17th army again, which has made us take one damage, but forced the enemy core or army to actually just completely retreat. The field up ahead is behind a river, so that's not the worst place in the world to want to get defensive, especially with such weaklings at our front. So we'll take this core out from behind its cover, and we're gonna go ahead and move it forward a step. And then in the interest of doing as much damage as possible while keeping our more valuable units more secure, we're gonna move the 42nd army back into the entrenchments that that core just left. And we're going to move this core back here up into the entrenchments where we just moved the army out of. We're going to further attack the 17th army, forcing them to retreat further, not dealing any direct damage, not taking any damage either. That's something. Okay, I'll call that good. We are going to go ahead and reinforce the 41st army here back up to strength. It does need to recover, especially because it is especially in the way of danger. Our push here is going well, and somehow we are managing to maintain our supply. It might be... Due to the HQ, I'm more impressed by this one. I guess that's just a lot of supply coming out of Cheng Chao. We are still on the roadway. We want to survive here for as long as possible, so we are going to go ahead and reinforce this core back up to strength, as well as the army behind it. They're going to recover and continue entrenching in their location and maybe luring out the Japanese into operating further up north. As of right now, once I cut this rail line, there is no more operating out of China. You either have to sail away or you have to fight your way out. As of right now, I don't even know if they can operate all the way through. They might be able to, but our zone of control might interrupt them. I don't actually know about that. But it's time to get aggressive in the north too so that they don't easily isolate and kill any of us. At least that's the hope, right? We're gonna take the 23rd army here. We're gonna move it forward right into the enemy zone of control here. Oh, we can see an HQ. Interesting. We're gonna plop ourselves right down in this field next to this garrison. We're not going to attack it quite yet. That is not my goal. We're going to move a core up with it to further encompass and surround this enemy core. Ideally, I want this core to retreat. If it engages me, it engages me, but I want to see if I can convince it into retreating. That is my goal. We will take this core right here. We'll move it up just behind our army and core that are pushing forward. And now... Now we have something a little more complicated here. So we're going to take the army and we're going to try this again. Now that they're going to be so like hopefully split on what they can do. We're going to move the 5th army up forward towards Peking again with the core behind them. We're going to move the HQ up to Pauto to try to keep up. And we're going to take the artillery unit, which I intended to use for defensive purposes, but now it's going to be used for offensive purposes. We're going to deploy it right up here where as of next turn, it can hopefully start shelling. Shells one out of three. I wonder if it does that, like recovers one per turn. That's interesting. We can hopefully start shelling and breaking the enemies over here by Peking. That's, that's my goal now that I'm doing all these many pushes all at the same time. Still not done, however. There's something maybe a little more we can accomplish. So we're going to take the fourth army and we're going to attack the enemy Kimura HQ. Despite it saying that nothing's going to happen. Nothing happened. So we're going to swap because... I assumed I could do that, and look at that, I could. The 13th army in, and now we're gonna attack with them. Even though it says we're not gonna accomplish anything, which we really didn't. At least we didn't lose like it said we were gonna do. But hopefully, yeah, we are hurting the entrenchment of the HQ, and we are applying pressure. Still not possible to necessarily force our way through here with the troops we have available, unfortunately. But everything else, Seems to be working out quite well. The second core here is going to move just one touch north into these fortifications because I believe there will be more chances of an opening opening up there next turn. The special forces we got here can actually get an elite reinforcement, so I'm going to go ahead. 
Well, we still have such a point advantage. I'm going to get them their elite reinforcement while they're in supply. They're not on a rail line right now. So they're going to have to move around the hard way anyway. This is why I haven't bothered researching logistics for China just yet. We don't have enough of anything to research anything else right now. And with the current pace of the offensive, I don't see it necessary to recruit another garrison into the addition of the one that we are recruiting, which will be done for sure, I believe, next turn. So we're just going to save the points for now. They might be needed for reinforcements and other things next turn. And they might also be useful to purchasing another unit as we've gotten to exercise greatly with China already. Now it is time to end turn. So let's go ahead and ooh, let me zoom in first. See what the Axis has in store for us, you know, other than the fall of France, which is pretty much obvious and guaranteed. Malta hinders Axis supply in the Mediterranean. Hell yeah, you keep it up, boys. Getting a fuck ton of MPPs. Yep, very good, very nice. UK is just swimming in it thanks to all the colonies in India and everything. Even with all that being nerfed. Poor France is never going to get to use those MPPs. USSR is barely collecting anything. That's so sad. I wish they were more mobilized, but everything is like just perfectly worked out so that they don't get super mobilized. Alright, let's watch the fall of France, boys. Oh. I'll take that one kill. They're going to salvage so many MPPs from France that no matter what we do here, it's like, it's nothing. Oh, is that a new army that's just appeared in the center near Changchao? Changsha, or whatever the fuck it's called? Chang something? Got some air attacks in the north. Air power going into France. Interesting, they're hitting that army in the front in China. I'm more interested by China, because I know exactly how this is going to go. <laughs> They're actually attacking on the front instead of just going for Paris, which I didn't expect. They're actually killing off the course. Quite interesting. They're trying to go, oh, defensive artillery. Didn't even know that was a thing. Wow, that really, really helped. We dealt a lot of damage up there. That really, really helped. Their offensives are spread out. They're not concentrated, so they're not making any progress. Marcel still hasn't fallen, amazingly. I haven't even been reinforcing it. The Italians are attacking Paris. Oh, God. Okay. What? No, don't tell me Paris is going to live. Don't tell me Paris is going to live into August. No way. You could have taken it. There's no way. Okay, that went northeast. You, you could take it. No, you've surrounded it. You didn't use the armor. You want You went west instead. Holy shit, France is living into August. With all the mistakes I've made, now the Germans are making some. Thank God. Thank God. Japan wants to make a crow eastern greater prosperity sphere, blah, 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 whatever the hell that's about. I don't know what effects that has. It might just be a historical thing. Two French things destroyed. And that's it. Decision. Given the threats now facing our convoy routes around the world, the U.S. government has offered us some destroyers in return for bases in the Caribbean and British Guiana. All of these five destroyer units will need repairs and fitting out to prepare them for service. Their numbers could really help keep the Atlantic safe for our shipping. In addition, th this evidence of U.S. support for our struggle will boost national morale by 1,000 points. However, by agreeing to this, the transfer bases will roughly have our imports from the British Empire and the Caribbean. Shall we agree? Let's see. If you say yes, the U.K. receives... Strength 6, 8, and 6 uh, destroyers over a period of time, and Canada receives two destroyers. The only downside to saying yes is that our income from the Caribbean will be reduced, but at least with these destroyers, we'll be able to better protect our convoy routes in the Atlantic. Yeah, no shit. Five destroyers. Five. Destroyers are expensive. Income from the Caribbean. What income are we even getting from the Caribbean? But, huh. But then doesn't that mean America gets this stuff anyway so like we still have it right i don't know i'll take it that sounds great yeah bermuda is now american i guess our seventh armored division in egypt is very incomplete having only 65 obsolete vehicles very few of them are combat worthy we are currently in the process of completing 150 new tanks that will soon be ready for service and given the Axis threat to our position in Egypt is recommended that they be sent there to strengthen the 7th Armored. However, sending them will require a heavily armored naval convoy that will cost us 45 MPPs and they won't be there until mid-October of this year. Would you like to send them to Egypt to reinforce the 7th Armored or would you rather deploy these tanks to the UK for the defense of our home country? 
generally best to say yes, as it's essential to secure the safety of our position there. The only good reason for saying no would be if the Axis were invading the UK. The 7th Armoured, known as the Desert Rats, saw action in North Africa, Italy, and the liberation of Northwestern Europe, while one brigade also fought against the Japanese in Burma. Alright, sure, let's send them there. I don't think the AI Axis is really going to try to invade the UK. Some important aircraft orders that have been placed in our country by the French government are nearing completion. We can either supply the aircraft to French, or we can use them to equip our own air force. The aircraft to be delivered are a tactical bomber and a medium bomber unit. Delivering them costs us 25 MPPs. Saying yes is a good way to rapidly increase French air strength. And the US should be able to replace the delivered aircraft... Wait, oh wow, I messed that word up. Quickly, once her war economy starts to reach the full potential. However, if France looks like it's about to surrender, it'd be better to say no and keep the aircraft. Yeah, about that. We're going to keep the aircraft. We... <laughs> Yeah. And then we have some new fighters for the UK. Some garrisons. And we have five guaranteed destroyers. This is great. This is great. I'd say that went pretty great. I am actually so impressed, France. You lasted way longer than I expected in spite of all the mistakes that I have made. Everything is going well. Everything is going not only according to plan, but beyond my plan. It's surpassing my plans. In just about every regard, with the exception I've, you know, lost a British battleship. I mean, I'm actually really proud. I didn't think I'd be doing this well. I'm very happy with this. Are you guys happy with this? You think I could be doing better? Do you think I could be doing worse? I don't know. I'm just trying to provoke a comment out of you. Because this episode's over. I can't wait to take on this turn in the next episode, though. So, thank you guys very much for watching. And I'll see you on the next one.